Hello and welcome back to OnChain Reaction. I'm your host James Bennett and today we're going to be looking at what's going on on the Bitcoin network and in the DeFi world, uh, both on and off the chain. Okay, so let's jump right into it. So this week uh, we're seeing Bitcoin is experiencing higher volatility as price stalls just shy of $60,000. Volatility often picks up when prices are high and, and seeing you know, greater downside um, on the way up. It can often be uh, steadier. Um, it's just indicative of a lot of trading activity going on and perhaps slightly less uh, liquidity on exchanges that people can buy and sell into. Uh, looking at what's going on on the chain itself, you know, it's a pretty positive picture. We can see here that the Bitcoin network economy is sustaining above $8 billion of transfers per day, uh, which is pretty reassuring um, that we've hit this sort of new level of activity uh, since about end of December last year. And that also helps very much to sustain that sort of fifty dollars to $60,000 price that we are continuing to see. Okay, jumping into uh, another on-chain metric here, we're looking in black at the 35-day uh, moving average of high-value traffic. So that's the top quintile of traffic in Bitcoin terms. And you can see that that ranges between about 150,000 uh, to 300,000 Bitcoin being transferred uh, per day um, on average. And um, you know what's really interesting is that whilst price has been steadily rising um, and picking up sharply from uh, January 21, we can see that the uh, actual amount of Bitcoin being transferred has fallen uh, right down towards that sort of bottoming level of around 150K. If you've seen this presentation in previous weeks, you'd know that that is sort of a bottom that we, we often um, sort of find for that top level of traffic. Uh, and it just means that you know, there are essentially less Bitcoin being moved on chain. So high uh, dollar value being moved, but because the price per individual unit of Bitcoin has gone up, the actual number of Bitcoin moving has fallen. Um, another way we look at this is through velocity, um, and it's a similar sort of picture there. Uh, I just wanted to point out where this uh, arrow is showing uh, the last sort of peak in the um, high level traffic was when Tesla announced their one and a half billion dollar purchase of Bitcoin uh, that was in, I think 8th of February having invested in, in January and that's where we saw a lot of institutional excitement with the likes of uh, MicroStrategy and you know Guggenheim and, and various others that had been announcing their Bitcoin positions uh, and since then you know interest has been slightly uh, dropping off. Now moving to the next slide here and um, we're looking at the uh, net inflows or uh, Bitcoin into institutional investment products. So that's your coin shares, your Grayscale, uh, Osprey, Wis Wisdom Tree, so both US and EU combined. This is a fantastic data set that we've just put out on the Byte Tree Asset Management website. Uh, you can see there the source at the bottom under Bitcoin flows. We will continue to be adding uh, new Bitcoin um, funds. But you know, the picture here is um, you know, this isn't negative uh, inflows. But that fall that we've seen since January, the orange line there is the 90 day um, fund inflows, which is saying that, you know, today we're seeing 36,000 Bitcoin um, coming in, whereas, you know, a few uh, months ago we were seeing over the last 90 days, whereas in January over that 90 day period, we'd seen 200,000 new Bitcoin coming into funds, 200,000, which is just under a third of all the Bitcoin that currently sit in these um, regulated uh, products. Um, so, you know, overall, the picture is that Bitcoin's price has gone up, driven by an increase in institutional interest, but that now has sort of stalled or slowed down. Um, and, uh, and perhaps that's a big part of why we're seeing Bitcoin struggle to surpass that 60K uh, mark. And we're really looking for that next wave of investors to come in in order to lift us up towards that next bracket, you know, pushing up towards $100,000. So it hasn't all been um, sort of quiet uh, in price action across the industry. And if we look at the next slide here, um, you know, we're looking at the Bitcoin dominance index, uh, which is the market cap of Bitcoin relative to the rest of the uh, crypto assets in the market. And I've put here, you know, history rhymes um, as uh, it is very, very similar to what we saw in the last bull run, which ended 
for Bitcoin on the sort of 15th of December 2017. I've highlighted that there. Um, you can see that at that time, that's sort of in the middle of the chart, uh, we were at about 45% Bitcoin dominance. That rose up through the bear market. Uh, you can see up through 19 and 20, where we were up at about 70%. Um, peaked again uh, in December, driven by that huge wave of institutional interest into Bitcoin and has since then tailed off uh, since January, right down to that 45% you can see on the far right hand side of the chart where we are today. So, okay, where is this money all going? You know, is it leaving the space? Well, actually, no, uh, it's just shifting into different areas of the space. And looking on this final slide here, we can see that, that uh, those sort of fund flows have moved into decentralized finance or DeFi, uh, locked into these yield generating products um, in order to generate some kind of passive income on their Bitcoin and ETH positions. So we know that people are you know, bullish on the space now. There's been a huge amount of positive press um, to suggest that you know, this industry is very much here to stay and being integrated with all sorts of different payment processes and banks and trading desks. Um, and it's all incredibly exciting. Uh, and what's been happening now is as Bitcoin stalled, people have you know, seen that there are so many other uh, ways that they can participate in the space and generate yield. Um, and, and here uh, we're looking at the total value locked uh, in US dollar terms in orange. And this is a brilliant uh, chart from, from DeFi uh, Pulse. Uh, you should be able to find this on the internet yourself. Um, and you know what I want to highlight here is we've got up to about $86 billion of value locked, uh, which is now I believe more than the total amount of Bitcoin that's invested into institutional products. So this is a serious uh, size, uh, this space, so very much worth paying attention to. And these two blue arrows uh, show how the pace of new value locked has really shifted a gear uh, since the beginning, beginning of this year. Um, and as you could see, you know, throughout the presentation, that sort of January time at the beginning of this year is when um, Bitcoin interest sort of started to wane a little bit, um, and that has, you know, transitioned into DeFi. So overall, a very positive picture for the industry, um, and hopefully gives you a bit of context as to why Bitcoin is behaving the way it is. Okay, that's all from me for now. If you want to find out any more about the metrics we've looked at today, do hop on over to bytree.com. We've got a YouTube channel, Twitter, and various other resources. If you have questions, drop me a line at info at Until then, have a great week.